Hello, I'm Mazio Fayas Toshizi, and today I'm going to talk about combined equation of state modeling and coarse grain molecular simulation of polymers and mixtures via Saft Gamma Mir. Polymers are versatile materials, as you know, they're ubiquitous in almost every product we use, and they will be useful in the future as well as um, we are making technological advances. What's really interesting about polymers is stems from the chemical variety and the structural variety. The chemical variety is due to the arrangements of the different monomers that constitute a polymer and structural variety comes from the way that they're arranged as well. Um, for example, if you have a linear polymer or a branched, cross-linked or a star polymer as well. Of particular interest to many applications of polymers is understanding how this variety, this chemical composition or the structural composition affects the macroscopic behavior. For example, if um, the, for a given structure or chemical variety, what's the density, what's the characteristic ratio, what's the glass transition temperature, thermal expansion, so on and so forth. Moreover, polymers as blends as well in solvents, they can exhibit very complex phase behavior as well, which is of interest. Um, particularly in terms of miscibility, they have very strange behavior. Um, if you, for example, for some cases, if you increase the temperature, they might phase separate or in the other cases, if you increase temperature, they might be miscible. So there are particular challenges in polymer modeling. For example, the fact that there are many diff different degrees of freedom that affects the properties of the, the system that is under study. For example, the temperature, pressure, molecular weights, the polydispersity, the composition of polymers can all affect the phase behavior of the polymer. Uh, moreover, polymers are multi-scale materials, which makes them challenging to model inherently because um, there is a wide range of scales that one can be uh, focusing on in terms of studying them. One thing that we will be looking at is in terms of uh, coarse grained mesoscale modeling, where we could uh, span length scales that are inaccessible to atomistic models, ranging from one nanometer to uh, almost 100 nanometers. And in order to do this, we will provide, uh, provide a novel technique, a new technique. Uh, we propose that to bridge the gap between the macroscopic observables that we see in terms of polymers and the mesoscale description of them. And in order to do this, we provide intermolecular potential parameters. We develop them so that they can be used in two tools simultaneously. The first tool is an equation of states. It's called saft gamma mir equation of states, where the intermolecular potentials are used to predict macroscopic uh, description of the system. So a mesoscale is used to describe the ma macro macroscopic behavior. On the other hand, we go the opposite way. So we use basically intermolecular param potential parameters developed using uh, this macroscopic experimental data and then to provide molecular simulation insights at the mesoscale. And by doing this, by going both ways, so going from macroscale to mesoscale and from going me to from mesoscale to macroscale, we basically come up with quantitative in terms of thermodynamics, a quantitative, uh, a quantitatively accurate uh, molecular model. Um, and this is basically that's the, the purpose of this talk, is to bridge the gap between the macroscopic description and the mesoscopic description of polymers. Um, in order to do this, we heavily rely on experimental data, the macroscopic experimental data, and we use that in conjunction with the, the equation of state and molecular dynamic simulations and each one complements the other in a self-consistent manner. Now, in order to provide a description of polymers that can be used in both the equation of state to describe a macroscopic description of polymers and to use in molecular simulations, we use a consistent definition of polymers. What we assume polymers are, are chains of tangentially bonded monomers. So basically like a pearl necklace where each segment is a pseudo particle which is in contact with the other segment, its neighboring segments. These, these segments are not atomistically detailed, they actually group, each one represents a group or a, a collection of atoms, and each pseudo particle, these, these coarse grain segments, they all interact with each other using a Mir potential. So Mir potential is a generalized Lanner-Jonesian potential, it is exactly the same as a Lanner-Jones potential, if one of its variables, this lambda repulsive, is 12. So basically, imagine making a Lana Jones potential more versatile by making it having a variable range. So by manipulating this extra variable, we could have a potential where the position of the minimum changes and the potential becomes harder or softer. So this is quite useful because it provides an additional degree of freedom to get a better fit to our models. 
So imagine now we have a pearl necklace model. We know that this this uh, pearl necklace model of polymers, we know how they interact with each other using a mere potential. We know exactly what the parameters are. We could feed that directly into the equation of states, which is our tool number one, to predict the thermodynamic macroscopic descriptions of the system. So with SAFT, we, we could directly put these parameters in. So this epsilon, sigma, and lambda of the mere potential. This, this equation of state that we use is called statistical associating fluid theory, or SAFT, gamma. And the way it works is that it, it, has, uh, it takes into account the sum of three contributions. It firstly assumes that all monomers are ideal gases and there is a contribution to the Helmholtz free energy for that. Then it assumes that monomers uh, are actually interacting with each other, not as ideal gases, but as mere particles, as mere fluids. And the final contribution is that it assumes that actually molecules are composed of chains of these monomers in our system. So by taking into account these three contributions, we actually have a very accurate representation of a polymer system. If we assume that a polymer is a tangentially bonded uh, chain of tangentially bonded spheres. So this provides a very useful tool because actually we have a full description of a mere fluid uh, of any chain length. So this can be used as a parameter estimation tool actually as well. So not only can we come up and predict the properties of a particular any mere fluid, we could actually uh, predict properties of actual fluids, real fluids, by doing a parameter estimation, by fitting uh, our models to experimental data. So this is what we do in terms of parameterizing polymers. We take experimental data, we use the equation of states uh, to, as a parameter estimation tool to obtain the best epsilon, sigma, and lambda for a given uh, model that can provide the best fit to experimental data. Once we have that, we could then use the equation of states to predict other properties of that same fluid. For example, we could fit the parameters to pure component data and predict mixture properties. On the other hand, we could also fit this directly into uh, the um, uh, molecular simulation packages and predict other properties such as dynamical properties, transport properties, viscosities, diffusion coefficients, and interfacial properties. So in order to do this um, for polymers, instead of using experimental data of polymers, as I mentioned before, we actually take uh, experimental data of other molecules that contain the monomer units. So the reason we use uh, other molecules, we use oligomers that are smaller than the polymers, is because we have much better quality experimental data uh, and so we find molecules that contain the monomer units and we fit these monomer unit parameters to those experiment to those molecules that we have good, very good quality experimental data. For example, for polyethylene, instead of fitting our parameters to a polyethylene experimental data, we actually find parameters for like C26. Although C26 one might assume that it looks like this, we actually say no, it doesn't look like that. It's actually uh, uh, compo it's composed of six segments of... Um, um, basically coarse grain models, uh, where each red segment is um, a collection of four uh, CH2 groups, uh, and each segment is a polyethylene monomer in our SAFT representation of the polymer. So basically, in this C26, we have six polyethylene monomers and two terminal groups. Now, so this becomes our model, and we find experimental data, and we fit it to that. So not only we use C26, we could, for example, find hexane, decane, tetradecane parameters and this this for example decane could be this exactly uh, composed of these two types of molecules the pseudo particles but um, instead of having six of these red ones decane has two hexane has one red bead decane has two tetradecane has three octadecane has four so on and so forth and we could actually fit these to experimental data and all of them simultaneously to provide a very good uh, set of potential parameters that correlates well all the way to high molecular weight polyethylene so once we have the parameter for one single red segment, we could extend that. We could replicate. The, we could come up with a model of a chain uh, of any number of red segments. That would be the polyethylene model that we have. So we could predict a range of properties using the equation of state. Once the equation of state is good enough, then we could go and directly do study stuff in molecular simulations, and we could de get the same microscopic description used from the molecular simulations as well. So a particular advantage of this method is that parameters are state independent and we could very efficiently get bo both pure components and cross interaction coefficients into species uh, interaction parameters as well. So uh, also before we could do simulations we could always know a priori if we are in a miscibility or an immiscibility region as well. The polymers studied in this work are six polymers, are very uh, conventional ones, 
uh, basically the alkane types, the alkene uh, polymers, and the polystyrene. In terms of homopolymer melts, so just these are single phase pure component properties, we could actually predict their properties by fitting the parameters to oligomers. As you could see here, for example, we could fit the PVT data very well, very robustly. And although we just fitted all the parameters for the to oligomers, we could accurately predict the densities of different polymers at a range of different temperatures and pressures. Not only we could do that with the equation of states, we could actually do this with molecular dynamics simulations. As you can see that there is a very good correspondence between the results obtained from molecular simulations to those obtained from the equation of states at different temperatures and pressures. Not only can we get PVT properties for homopolymer melts, we could actually get an external agreement in terms of structural properties, for example, the radius of gyration and end-to-end -end distances. I'm demonstrating one case for polystyrene but we could also get very accurate mechanical properties, such as the isothermal compressibility and, uh, for example, the, the characteristic ratio, which describes the chain stiffness to some extent. Not only in terms of homopolymer belts, we could actually characterize these polymers quite well in terms of the uh, PVT or structural properties. We can actually look at the mixture properties as well. So these are particularly challenging, as I mentioned before, because polymers exhibit a wide range of miscibility behavior in solvents and uh, as in blends. So one case, very common one, is the upper critical solution temperature behavior where we increase the temperature and we get miscibility. Type 5 is the exact opposite where we increase temperature and we get miscibility, immiscibility and we have things in between as well. So here we'll demonstrate a few examples where we have excellent correspondence between the simulations, the equation of states and experimental data. To measure LLE using molecular simulations, we use the method of Gelben-Muller we split the simulation box into little boxes and measure local compositions. If we have a bimodal distribution, we are in the LLE region. If we have a unimodal distribution, we, have, we are in the miscibility region. So the first case we show is the LCSD, so li uh, low critical solution temperature. This is the case where we increase the temperature and the system becomes immiscible. Um, and as you can see here, for example, on the left-hand side, uh, we could see uh, the, the agreement between the molecular simulations, which is the red and the blue dots and the black line, which is the uh, results of the equation of states, and the black symbols, which are the experimental data, we get an excellent agreement between all three systems. And this is purely predictive. No adjustable parameters were used to, to model the polyethylene with pentane. More interestingly as well, we could not only get LCSD behavior, we could get upper critical solution temperature behavior as well. So we increase the temperature and the system becomes miscible. This is a case of low molecular weight polystyrene in N-hexane and we increase the temperature and the system goes from a bimodal distribution to a unimodal distribution. Now, if we take this system, so polystyrene and hexane, and make the polystyrene slightly uh, higher in molecular weight, this is a very interesting case where we actually have a composition-dependent miscibility, whereby uh, if we are in a global composition of 30%, we do not have any miscibility, everything is immiscible, everything is bimodal distribution. If we increase the global composition of a higher molecular weight polystyrene in N-hexane, there is a small region of miscibility where we get a unimodal distribution. This is in quantitative agreement, uh, the results of the simulations with uh, the results of the equation of states, again, highlighting the robustness of our methodology. Um, and the equation of states is in quantitative agreement with uh, the results of the experimental data. Okay, we take the same polystyrene and we put it in N-heptane instead of N-hexane. N-heptane is slightly more miscible with polystyrene and we get a type 4 phase behavior again, we get unimodal and bimodal distributions. Again, excellent agreements with simulations. And finally, we could even go into very, very high molecular weight polypropylene and in propane, and we could actually see that we can get um, miscibility, pressure-induced miscibility, um, again, uh, which is in quantitative agreement between the um, experimental results, molecular simulations, and the equation of states. So in conclusion, it's been shown that soft gamma mere equation of states is an accurate equation of states in terms of describing, in uh, optimizing uh, coarse grain potential parameters for polymers. Parameters obtained can be used directly in molecular simulations to uh, predict the first thermo same thermodynamic uh, behavior, as well as more things such as structural properties. And finally, accurate parameterization of interspecies interactions parameters leads to quantitatively accurate observation of liquid-liquid equilibrium in molecular simulations. 
So on that note, I would like to thank you. And if you'd like to um, uh, discuss this more, contact me or you could read the paper. Uh, and thanks for this opportunity.